Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to report the sales of an ESPP and RSU stock sales on your tax return. More specifically, this is from an E-Trade brokerage account where the taxpayer sold the RSUs and disqualifying dispositions of the ESPP that resulted in a short-term capital gain. All right, so we're gonna be going over all the documents that you need, and we're gonna be analyzing these documents, the W-2, the 1099. We're trying to reconcile this to see what was already taxed and making sure that we have the correct basis so when we go to report the sales of these stocks, the gain is reported accurately. We are not getting double taxed. Now, if you wanna skip ahead and not see all this technical talk here and see how I got it done specifically for this case here, again, using an E-Trade brokerage account, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the end where I actually enter this into TurboTax. However, I don't recommend that because each case is different in how these things are getting reported and I'm always analyzing these before I go to report these on the tax return. All right, so most importantly, what documents do we need? I, I can't tell you how many times I do tax returns and I don't get all the documents I need in order to make this calculation. So this is what we need. We need a copy of the W-2, of course. We need a copy of that 1099 from the brokerage account. Wanna make sure that, hey, we get all of those 1099s because sometimes there might be two out there depending upon how many different types of stock options we have. So we need to get both of those, maybe three. I've never seen that, but maybe two for sure. And then there's like the supplemental information here, number three, right? Charles Schwab's calls it this activity statement. E-Trade calls it the stock plan transaction supplement. Want to make sure you get a copy of that too from the brokerage account. Now, in the case of the Charles Schwab example that I have in a separate video, be sure to check that one out if this does not apply to you. We had to get a copy of the purchase disposition summary, which had some information that was useful in calculating the proper gain and basis for these stock sales. All right, so the first thing we wanna check out here in determining the proper basis for these stock sales is the W-2. The reason for that is we wanna see what was already reported in your W-2 as taxable income from these stock sales. All right, of course, in this W-2, I know it has a big amount here, and that's gonna be the first thing that you see, but that's not what we're looking at, okay? We're looking at here where it says these non-quals options and these restricted stock. And the other thing that you're gonna see here is there's some deductions here. Now, I made a lovely spreadsheet that we kind of go through this to, to reconcile what was actually reported as taxable in box one. All right, so I basically recreated that W-2 on a spreadsheet here to see exactly again what was reported in box one. You'll see that 700,000 figure, that was from box one. But if we add all the additions from the top of the W-2, right, we'll see it's 800,000. Now the difference between these are essentially your health insurance and this 401k. You'll notice that these stock options here were not deducted out of this pay. So these amounts here were actually reported as income. So now we wanna make sure that this is included in the basis of the sale on those stocks. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to take a look at is the actual 1099 itself and that supplemental statement that they provide and compare these two. So on the 1099, if we actually kind of dig deep here, we're gonna realize that these ESPPs and the RSUs are actually separately stated here, okay? And the reason for that is because one of them does not report the basis to the IRS, whereas the other one does. Nonetheless, you're gonna see all these transactions here on the supplemental page, and you'll be able to reconcile that with the amount of like these shares that were sold, okay? So if we wanna look, right, that 50, uh, 560, you'll see that right here, and we can reconcile that number. You'll see that 142, there it is, okay? And you see the cost basis, those are the same. Now I kinda line those up here so we can kinda compare these apples to apples on one page. I'm gonna get my face out of the way so we can actually look at this here, okay? And you'll see here on this supplemental statement that they actually did separate the RSUs and the ESPPs, the non-qualified sales of those ESPPs. And you'll see, right, this is the ESPPs, right? We'll see that 66 lines right up here. Now you're gonna see here, there's the ordinary income adjustment on this supplemental statement. 
And we know that this income is not reported in this basis because of this supplemental statement here. So what we're gonna need to do is actually add these amounts, those highlighted amounts into the basis. So we'll get our adjusted basis. Now this is what needs to get reported on the tax return. Now I actually got these amounts on a spreadsheet and we can see and reconcile these amounts, right? That ordinary income reported here, that total we will actually see on the W-2 right there as already previously being taxed in that 700,000. So that was the ESPP. This is the RSUs here. And you'll see, right, reported on the 1099, there is no basis, right? So if we don't make this adjustment, they're gonna tax us here. But we do know that this was already previously included in the W-2. As RSUs, when those are granted to you, those get taxed. And again, back to the spreadsheet, you'll see those, those two transactions that happen, total 56, you'll be able to reconcile that with the W-2 right there. It is not that amount here because these are new RSUs that are just issued this year and that have not been sold yet. These are the ones that have actually been sold, but these have already been included in W-2s in previous years. All right, so now we know what we need to do. We're gonna report the amounts given on the 1099 and then make an adjustment for the amounts that have already been taxed on the W-2 as ordinary income. Since these are reported separately on the 1099 from the RSUs versus the ESPPs, those other ones here, we'll have to make two separate entries for proceeds, basis, and adjustments. And that's why I got my handy spreadsheet here so when we go to report those on the tax return, I know exactly what adjustments I need to make here. All right, so to get this done in TurboTax, here we go. We're gonna scroll to the wage and income section here, scroll on down to the investments and savings, hit that add or edit here, scroll on down, and you're gonna wanna add investments. Click continue. For illustration purposes, I'm not gonna log in here, I'm gonna enter it a different way. Click on that 1099B, continue, and then enter in the brokerage name here. All right, so we know we included these ESPPs and the RSUs, so we'll click yes, and then we have over four transactions, continue. For time's sake, I'm gonna enter the total sales here. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to get this done from the 1099, hit continue. All right, for the sales section part here, we're gonna have to go to the 1099 and you'll see here, right? It's gonna say covered short-term gains. So you'll know to click that short-term basis, reported the IRS covered. Okay, now we enter in the information. Again, just straight from the 1099. We're gonna enter in these total amounts right here, proceeds and cost basis. So we get that done. All right, so super important here. We gotta check this box that says we need to make an adjustment to the cost basis for the amounts that were previously reported on our W-2. We don't wanna get double taxed here, okay? So we gotta make that adjustment. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my handy spreadsheet here and I'm gonna see the amount of the adjustment that I need to make, right? That 372, because we'll see we already input the 450 and that 80 in there. We need to make this big adjustment though, the 372. Again, you'll be able to see this on the W-2 itself right here. All right, so we enter that in here as a negative number. 67.25, there we go. Whoops, way too big. And click continue. And then we should see these numbers reconcile, right? That 739 reconcile with my spreadsheet here. It would be proceeds minus costs minus our ordinary income is gonna equal our $700 there. Okay, that's what these things are doing here, right? All right, we'll have to add another section here for the RSUs. Take a look back at the 1099 here and we'll see the RSUs are reported here, non-covered short-term gains. So we'll, we'll put that here, short-term non-covered, there it is. And then we're gonna enter the totals again from the 1099 right here, okay? So the 85 is the proceeds. 
and there was no cost basis on the 1099. And we're going to say, again, we need to make an adjustment here. I'm going to say the cost basis was incorrect and go back to my handy spreadsheet here and make that adjustment. So here's my spreadsheet. And again, we can also reconcile with here on the W-2. That 56,000, they're both there, okay? That's what I'm putting here into TurboTax. Click continue and again, want to just double check the amounts are proper here, right? You'll see that 29, that's the gain that we need to report. All right, we're gonna hit continue. And now we have to upload a copy of the 1099 to TurboTax and that's it continue and we're done so you're going to want to after you do everything else with your tax return you're going to run to review this section on the tax return before you actually file this make sure it got done properly so we go to schedule d and you'll see the amounts reported here but more importantly they'll be in detail on these 8949s you'll see these e trade right c attachment and we'll have those proceeds this was from the ESPP that big adjustment and those codes for the adjustment right b is saying it's incorrect basis and m is saying essentially there are multiple transactions involved in this one line here but you'll see that 740 and you'll see again that does tie with my spreadsheet here and then go to the next one here where the RSUs were, not this one, this is from previous here, right? Where we had the zero basis, right? No basis and we had to make that big adjustment. Again, you'll see that 29,000, which is what ends up on the tax return, ties with my spreadsheet here, okay? And if we again, we go up to the schedule D, you'll see those amounts reported here, right? That's 740 and that 29,000 and that's it. I hope the video was helpful for you. I know the stock option stuff it does get confusing, so I'm doing my best here to help you guys out. I did make another video that involves a Charles Schwab account and where we actually didn't have to make as many adjustments. So it's not a one size fits all in terms of how to get this done. So be sure to make, make sure that you are doing these properly in terms of just reconciling all the amounts from the w2 the 1099 and those supplemental statements that these brokerage accounts are giving you thanks again guys